All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. The beautiful April 31st day. Look at that. Or April 30th, whatever it is. Look at that. It's not even May yet. And that is my background for this video. Oh, you guys are pretty lucky because you get this as a foreground as well. Uh, short video. And then at the end, I'll throw on a little start of cabin season video. Um, but yeah, so I went to no-till. The scenario is we went to no-till and we saw a really big yield drag, especially in a corn type crop. Um, but we thought we had good rich fertile soil. So is it because it was too cold and wet? And I would say no. Uh, the biggest thing there for tillage versus the no-till, the, the yield thing, is when you do tillage, you release a big flush of nutrients. And to that young seedling, it gets it up and out of the ground and gets it running, up and running real quick. Uh, on a no-till side, you, you remove that flush of nutrients. If you're new to no-till, you haven't built the life in the soil to now supply them nutrients. And so you're kind of starving the plant out there until you can get out there and hand feed it some. Even in a no-till, if you broadcast, so if you burnt this rye down here and then broadcast your urea ahead of the planter, you got what's on top of the ground and what's under the ground is gonna absorb some of that nitrogen. That, that's just how it works, carbon and nitrogen stuff. Um, so it's gonna absorb some of that nitrogen, really limiting what that young seedling needs. And in corn, that young seedling really determines the kernels around. So any stresses early on, you can easily give up two rows around a cob. Well, two rows around a cob, you know, it don't take long and you've lost five, 10, 20 bushels. And so uh, what if you lose four rows around a cob? You know, you're, you, that's huge, that's huge. And so in a no-till situation, what we want to do is really manage that early fertility program better. Uh, I saw it here when we transitioned. It was all at the same time. We were transitioning from where we were reducing till. You know, we were already into no-till, and then we were going to broad or, uh, banding, and we eliminated the pre-plant pass, thinking we'd come back post. And I could see it, the neighbors across the road that put 100% of urea ahead of the planter, um, they came out of the ground, they were rolling up. If we were planting at a similar date, they emerged at a similar date. Uh, and then all of a sudden they get up V2, heading to V3, and I was like, all that nutrients in the soil, the commercial nutrients plus the tilled soil nutrients, that plant just took off. Ours was pretty lazy. It was still green. It wasn't stressing much, but it was just coming up slower. Um, so then we were side dressing, playing with different side dressing programs and timings and stuff like that. Uh, some in furrow and no in furrow. And it came, but then what we noticed in August was this corn in August is fired. The bottom is all yellow and fired and it's getting a lot of tip back. Ours as the fall went on just kept getting greener and greener and more green, more green. And so then we were moving some of that nitrogen up earlier uh, on, on our soil conventionally tilled. Pushing the nitrogen earlier would be very counterproductive because it's going to wash away, volatize or, or leach away. But things are changing and so by by pulling some of that nitrogen earlier we're really seeing a big benefit from it and i'm kind of going back to more in furrow again uh because it's really for now it's really popping up and and it's helping um if i was in conventional tilled ground going into a little bit of a warmer soil <clears throat> i've done it we we we, we did that many times on pop-up tests is uh, in the early season when it's super cold, your, your first couple days of planting, whether it's tilled or no-till, your first couple days of planting, that soil is cold. It, uh, I don't care how bright and hot that sun is, the next morning, that soil is air temperature cold. And, uh, and we've played with it and you could see that, you shut off that in furrow, you'd see that spot the next year. I mean, all year long at 70 miles an hour, you you basically made a eight rows of weeds. 
Um, but late, if you got delayed on planting, when you put your finger in the soil, it's, it's warm, it's wet. On them spots, we'd shut the pop-up off just to do a visual check, just a, and you couldn't find that spot. Same year, you know what I mean? And so I, I think in no-till, it really, really, that early season nutrient management, get it banded next to the plant, because look at all the root structure that's out here as well. It isn't just, you, you look at it and it's just like, oh, that thin little grass that's six inches tall, how much can it really hold up? You, as that nitrogen goes through the soil profile, you got all sorts of root mass and just tons of biomass down there that might start holding on to some of that nitrogen. And so, yeah, but mycorrhizal fungi, my best friend was a mushroom. He was a real fun guy. <clears throat> The mycorrhizal has been shown to produce and supply like the top 20 or 25 nutrients that our plants need. We just need to build that colony up and that might take two years, five years, 10 years, depending on your soil and, and how you're managing it. And so, yeah, I don't know. What's your experience on the no-till and fertility management in some crops? And uh, let's have a discussion down below. Kevin, season has begun. This is number two to hit the ground. Just, just hit the ground a few minutes ago. That little guy's been working pretty hard for the last 15 minutes on that udder, so it's, he must have got a couple swallows in. Mom's cleaning up her mess. Still wobbly. Come on. Oh. She moved on you, buddy. You're so close. <laughs> the other mom went into the shed around the corner. Where is the shed? Right there. She went into the shed there with her calf. <clears throat> Oh yeah. There he's got it. There he's got it. Drink, 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 drink. Chug, chug, chug. I'm not very close. but apparently I'm too close for her. Be invisible. Be invisible. 72, she's usually pretty good around me in the pasture, but it's good mom. He's already getting a little foam around his mouth. <laughs> 